Brad War, Roco Rescue Chief Instructor. We're here at the Baton Rouge Roco Training Center, and today we're going to take a look at the sked stretcher and the vertical bridle and how we can figure that. So you can see I've got my sked up here on the table. We've got Rescue Randy already placed in the sked. The first thing I've done is I've taken this sked and I've taken the four Cobra buckle straps that go horizontally across them, and I've tightened them up just to keep the sides upward, upright. What that allows me is it allows me easy access to these grommets and handles as I work my way down the sked. So I've tied, the, uh, tied up the feet strap, his feet are to the inside. I can go inside or outside depending on what I'm going to go through in a confined space. But generally we start with his feet to the inside and the straps to the outside of the feet. So we're going to start by putting on our vertical bridle. So I've got 10 meters or 33 feet of 9.5 millimeter Technora cord. Uh, so we're going to split this in the middle. I've got it evened up here. I'm going to travel to the center. I'm going to find that center and now I'm going to tie a butterfly on either side. Those tandem butterflies allow me redundancy in the system so that if one side gets cut or nicked or I have a, a failure of that side, I still have a bridle in place. So I'm going to start by tying a butterfly there. Roll that alpine butterfly out. Flip it around, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Pull that slack from the far end, tighten that down. There's my tandem alpine butterflies, and if I did that correctly, I should be pretty close to even at the other end, right? And that puts me in a pretty good spot. If I'm within four or five inches, I've got plenty of Technora rope to get through this entire bridle. So I'm going to take my tandem butterflies, and I'm going to set them here at the top. These two grommets here, those are going to be my anchor point, right? I'm keeping the handle out of my way. At some point, we're going to tuck that in so it gets out of our way. But if I am on the outside of the sked, I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to wrap it from the outside in until I suck that butterfly right up tight against that sked. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This is going to give me an anchor point to attach both my main and my belay line when I send this system and prepare it to go over the edge. So I'm going to pull this tight. I take a look. I've got those butterflies right there. One thing I can do here if I'm thinking ahead, so if, with a little bit of foresight, I can take a tri-link works really well here, or I can use a carabiner. Uh, um, it may appear immediately that I'm getting pulling in three directions on the carabiner, but as soon as this bridle settles in the stretches, it's going to be pulling right along the spine. So I can take my belay system, put a carabiner in, an auto-locking carabiner, and now I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab both of those butterflies. The benefit of grabbing those right now is that after I tighten this down, it pulls those butterflies apart and this allows me not to fight the stress of that system. So now I'm going to come into my main line, add a carabiner there, and now I'm going to come in and grab those same two butterflies to give myself redundancy in the system and to separate that main line and belay system out all the way to the patient. So now I'm going to pull this tight. I've got this backboard up against those grommets, so that becomes my pivot point, which reduces the chance that this flex flexible litter is going to push over onto the patient's head. By keeping the patient's head a little bit below the top of the backboard, now the pivot point becomes that board, and I find myself in a good spot. So now I'm going to look at these open grommets down the side. So if you look, I've got open grommets here, 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 and here, and all the way at the bottom. If you've got an open grommet, you're going to put a rope through it, right? But one of the other things we're going to do is we're going to chase these handles to give us the strength of these additional two handles in two different places. So if we take a look here, I'm on the outside I came in. We find that it rides simpler and easier and puts less pressure on the patient's shoulders if once I get to the inside, when I get to the second set of grommets, I go from inside out. Now I'm going to tension that up. I'm going to go through this handle. By going through that handle, I get the strength of those two grommets. Now I'm on the outside of the sked, so I'm going to go outside in, and I'm going to turn right back around and go inside out, and I'm going to pull that slack through. Right? I'm going to go through this handle right here, which gets me to this last open grommet on the sides. And through the grommet, because I'm on the inside, I'm going to shoot it straight down 
until it comes out the bottom and I'm just going to pull all that slack out. I've got my handles clear so I still have access to them. I'm going to come up to the other side and I'm going to work my way down. So outside in, tension that up through the handle. Outside in, inside out, take up that slack, come through that bottom handle again, and I come through that last remaining grommet. Once I clear that last grommet on the side, I'm going to shoot right through the bottom, and I'm going to pull these tight. At this point, this is where I need to go back and tension this up. So we need to be a little bit particular on how we do this, right? If I come in and just start to pull this tight, because the skid is a slick surface, I'm going to offset that patient, and that's going to work, mess with kind of the balance of how this load hangs, and it can be a little uncomfortable for the patient. So when I do this, I want to do it with a push-pull method. So we found that if I put my hand under, and you can see this strap is coming right across the center of the chest. I'm looking to get to that sternum, right? So if I come right across at the center of the chest, and I grab this and pull it from this side, and I grab this one and push and pull together, it allows me to evenly distribute those weight, that weight from both sides. So I'm going to tighten all the way down. So when I tighten these, there is great benefit in snugging this completely down. You're doing your patient a big disservice if you keep these a little bit loose because I'm trying to control the movement. And what controls the movement in a sked is the shape of it. So I am really tight here on the chest and the weight or the waist. And now when I come to here, I'm going to tighten this down, push, pull, I squeeze that together, and now I'm starting to narrow the profile of this sked. So this sked is now becoming a funnel, right? And that funnel is what keeps him from sliding down. These straps at the bottom are not what keep him from sliding out of this. It's the shape, having the wider shoulders and the wider hips and the narrower legs that keep us into this sked. These two bottom straps, when I put these together, I don't want to pull these tight up against his feet. If I do that, it's going to put a lot of pressure on his Achilles, on his toes. So I want to bring this up, leave a couple of inches of space below. If I want to, I see a lot of teams put some padding in here so when we go vertical, it's even a little more comfortable. And now I'm going to stow these buckles, or the extra straps coming out of those buckles, and give it a real clean profile so that I don't have a lot of stuff hanging out when I send this victim over the edge. So now once I've cleaned that up, everything looks good, I've got access to my handles, now I can tighten that bridle down. So I tighten it down from here, I'm going to pull it through all these grommets, all the way until I get to the bottom. Once I get to the bottom, I'm going to pull these two tight. So now I have a very structured, tight system that's going to reduce the amount of stretch. By reducing that stretch, it gives me the ability to take advantage of all the headspace I've got. Say I'm working on a tripod like we've got here behind us. So now I've got these two tails and I've got to do something with this rope, right? So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this rope and I'm going to tie a square knot, right? So I tie an easy square knot, but now I'm going to chase it until it's right up against the bottom of the sked. So I'm going to chase that all the way up. I'm going to grab my tails. I'm going to shorten those tails up. Now I still have two really long ropes that I'm going to deal with. So I'm going to bring these between his feet. What this does is when I tie this off, it's going to create a platform at the bottom. When that bridle comes tight, it's actually going to suck up against his feet and give him a platform to stand in, make it a little more comfortable. When I come through here, i got a myriad of choices that I could go with. But I generally find for myself that I'm going to go through one of the grommets for the handle. So I go outside in because I'm on the outside of the sked. Outside in. That handle's still very accessible for me to use. Coming up right between his feet to create that platform, and I take the two ends of my rope. If I've done this right, I should have just enough rope left to tie a nice solid square knot and finish that with overhand safeties. And that package is complete, and I'm ready to send it over an edge. And that's a quick rundown on a sked stretcher with a vertical bridle.